Jai Radha Madha Jai Kunjabi Jai Ram, 
saying how happy I am to be here with all of you on this very auspicious day of um, Gaur Purnima. Um, actually, as a traveling sannyasi, we have a choice <laughs> where uh, to go. We don't even have a GBC man we're working under. <laughs> but we have that liberty to some degree, to choose um, where to go and where to preach. And um, when I was planning my trip uh, to America, I was thinking where I'd like to go for uh, Gaur Purnima. And there's lots of choices in North America, lots of temples. And I was trying to think, and I was, in my mind I was going through all the states and the cities, and then I got stuck in Texas and Dallas, because I remember two years ago I was here and we had such a wonderful program. There's um, lots of senior devotees, lots of um, God brothers and God sisters. I remember the very uh, ecstatic kirtans we had here. You've got lots of good kirtaniers, good sankirtan leaders. You've got, you know, uh, amazing Verdunga players. Um, devotees love to chant and to dance and your deities are just captivating the heart <laughs> so I kind of went from the east coast towards the west and I got stuck on Dallas I didn't go any further so. <laughs> and also I knew that my very dear god brother um, His Holiness Gurdjieff Swami would be here and in his association, you can't help but go deeper and deeper and deeper into Krishna consciousness. And as we're growing older, we're in the final chapters, the autumn of our life. These things are very important to us that we finish up our Krishna consciousness in this lifetime, as Prabhupada several times requested. And that is only possible in the association of advanced devotees. So um, I love to be in Maharaj's association even though um, whenever I'm with them, I somehow end up speaking. <laughs> it's really, really, really embarrassing. Because usually I'm hearing him speak. I have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of his lectures on my iPod. <laughs> Talking about the iPod yesterday. So I'm, although I'm not always with him, I'm always hearing from him. And that's the essence, actually, Shravana. So this is a very special... Gaur Purnima festival for me. And also because um, here in Dallas and here in your association, um, many fond memories of Goswami Maharaj come to mind. And like many of you, most of you, all of you, Goswami Maharaj was very instrumental to my 
um, progress in Krishna consciousness, especially my um, sannyas. I was thinking this morning that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's the crescent jewel of all sannyasis. He's the, actually, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's the Supreme Enjoyer. And, um, but to the distress of his intimate associates 500 years ago, he gave up his um, householder life and his wonderful pastimes of Navadweep to embrace the austere life of a sannyasi so that the general mass of people would listen to his message of Krishna consciousness. This was a source of great distress to his devotees. How can he cut his long, beautiful, curling black hair and accept the garb of a sannyasi and sleep on the floor and be so renounced? This is not his position. But for the betterment of mankind, um, Lord Chaitanya accepted that role. So he is... And he was the perfect model sannyasi for those of us who have accepted the renounced order of life. We look to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the crest jewel of all sannyasis. And when the idea of, or the proposal that I take sannyas came up, actually I proposed it. <laughs> I went to my temple president, my GBC man, uh, Bhagavan Das, and I asked him if I could take sannyas. So I remember that day he said, you go ask Goswami Maharaj for permission. So we were in Mayapur at that time and um, I didn't know Maharaj, Goswami Maharaj so well at that time, but um, I remember uh, very nervously going to his room at Mayapur and knocking on the door. He said, who is it? <laughs> I said, it's Indra Dumna. Das Adhikari. He didn't know me so well. He said, what is it about? I said, Goswami Maharaj, I want to take sannyas. He said, come in. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Maharaj could be very heavy, guru. So I was so, I was literally shaking. I thought he was just going to blast me. Woo, you take sannyas? Who do you think? But he was very kind and like a older brother. Yeah, he said, "Come sit here." He was sitting on the ground on the cushion. "Come sit here." He was so kind, and you know, he was a, a senior sannyasi, GBC in our movement at that time, uh, guru. And um, he just sat down. He said, "So, why do you want to take sannyas?" I said, "So that I can preach Lord Chaitanya's sankirtan all over the world." He said, where is your wife? I said, she's back in France. And he said, so what about your householder life? I said, Goswami Maharaj, I'm always traveling, I'm always preaching. And he was just so kind to me. He said, all right, I will recommend you. Then he spent about two and a half hours giving me instructions how to be a sannyasi, how to live a simple life and be renounced. And the main thing he said was uh, spreading the holy names, being immersed in preaching. He said, sannyasa is not actually recommended in this age because of our strong tendency towards sense gratification in material life. He said, but I remember him saying, if you have that taste, pardam drishta nivartante, for spreading the holy name, she'll always remain fixed as a sannyasi. So, um, I received so many nice instructions from him like that. So on this day, of Gaur Purnima, I'm thinking of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that mood, remembering Goswami Maharaj in your association. One time, Goswami Maharaj in uh, Vrindavan, uh, he called me to his house. He was staying in that house not far from Krishna Balram Mandir. He said, so we're going to spend a week together and I'm going to instruct you in the deep esoteric teachings of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. I said, wow. Okay, because he'd been very deeply studying Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and um, various works of the Goswamis. At that time, it, hardly any devotees were doing like that. He was always at the forefront of Krishna consciousness. So, because I had so much faith in him as a, as a Sankatan devotee, I can honestly say that whatever 
taste or realizations I have about Sankirtan, that desire for preaching, I got from Maharaj. He, he pioneered Prabhupada's Sankirtan movement in the Western countries. His book distribution, Radha Damodar, Sankirtan party, like always. So I always look up to him like that. So I thought, well, if he wants to instruct me in these deeper teachings of Braj Bhakti, I have faith. Unfortunately, because I was so neophyte, um, every day we had class for three hours in his room, just me and him. He wouldn't let anyone else come. I'd come and he'd say, lock the door, Indra Swami. I locked the door, and we'd sit in his room, and he would progressively go through the teachings from Shraddha to Prema. He was studying it, and he told me, it, the, in my studies, to understand it, I, I need to speak it. I can't just study this. I have to share this with someone, and I want to share it with you. So every day, it was just he was right there, sit, made me sit right in front of him, and he would speak, and inevitably, I would fall asleep. <laughs> and he just gave up. I mean, he didn't give up, but he kept preaching once. He said, okay, now it's time to wake up. I'd wake up, you know. <laughs> Don't sleep. And I, <laughs> but I was tired. I'd been on a long you know, marathon and book distribution. And then, but <laughs> he just kept preaching. <laughs> and I taped it all. I, there was, I don't know, over 20 or some odd hours of just nectar. And I just cursed myself that somehow I lost those tapes. For a long time, uh, Sri Pallad Prabhu, who later was traveling with, he discovered those cassette tapes in my belongings somewhere. He went through those day and night. He said, whatever he learned about Braj Bhakti, he learned from those tapes. And if you ever hear him speak, Sri Pallad is quite realized in that subject matter. And I don't know what happened to those tapes, but I, to this day I just curse myself that I didn't protect that valuable treasure. Because even though I was sleeping then, I can tell Goswami Maharaj, I'm, I'm ready to hear from him now. That subject matter. I promise that next time he speaks to me about that, I, I won't sleep. Well, that was, you know, so I'm remembering him. Although I took sannyas from someone else, I consider Goswami Maharaj to be like my sannyas guru because he gave the permission and he inspired me in Sankatana. He wanted to instruct me in those things that Sannyasi should hear about Vrindavan, etc. So I think I came to the right place for Gaur Purnima. Thank you. This morning, on this auspicious day, oh, I remember one, I want to say one more thing. One time Maharaj said to me, He said, So, you should come with me. I said, Go, Swami Maharaj, I'm with um, Bhagavan Das. He said, No, you should come with me. <laughs> he wanted to kidnap me, steal me. He said, just like the old days, he said, like Vishnu John, he said, I'll give all the lectures and you'll lead the kirtans and we'll travel together all over the world. I didn't accept that invitation, but I'm ready to accept it now. So we're reading from uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Adi Lila, Volume 1, Chapter 2, Text Number 2, on this auspicious day of Gaur Purnima. Jaya Jaya Sita Tanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Go Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Go Bhakta Vrindam Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Go Bhakta Vrindam So the, uh, the text is quite long, and I think even the Brahma Samhita verse, let's see, it's too long. So. 
Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Kala Pato Jani Bajita Sad Bhaktavali Hamsha Chakra Madhupashini Viha Raspadam Karnanandi Kala Dvanir Vahatu Me Jiva Maru Kragane Sri Chaitanya Daya Nidhe Tava Lasa Lila Shuddha Svaraduni. It's a very beautiful and famous verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Oh, my most merciful Lord Chaitanya, may the nectarian Ganges waters of your transcendental activities flow on the surface of my desert like tongue. Beautifying these waters are the lotus flowers of singing, dancing, and loud chanting of Krishna's holy name, which are the pleasure abodes of unalloyed devotees. These devotees are compared to swans, ducks, and bees. The river's flowing produces a melodious sound that gladdens their ears. Purport. Our tongues, always engaged in vibrating useless sounds, they do not help us to realize transcendental peace. The tongue is compared to a desert because the desert needs a constant supply of refreshing water to make it fertile and fruitful. Water is the substance most needed in the desert. The transient pleasure derived from mundane topics of art, culture, politics, sociology, dry philosophy, poetry, and so on is compared to a mere drop of water because although such topics have a qualitative feature of transcendental pleasure, they are saturated with the modes of material nature. Therefore, neither collectively nor individually can they satisfy the vast requirements of the desert-like tongue. Despite crying in various conferences, therefore, <clears throat> the desert-like tongue continues to be parched. For this reason, people from all parts of the world must call for the devotees of Lord Shri Titani Mahaprabhu, who are compared to swans swimming around the beautiful lotus feet of Shri Titani Mahaprabhu, or bees humming around his lotus feet in transcendental pleasure, searching for honey. The dryness of material happiness cannot be moistened by so-called philosophers who cry for Brahman, liberation, and similar dry speculative objects. The urge of the soul proper is different. The soul can be solaced only by the mercy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his many bona fide devotees who never leave the lotus feet of the Lord to become imitation Mahaprabhus, but all cling to his lotus feet like bees that never leave a honey-soaked lotus flower. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya's movement of Krishna consciousness is full of dancing and singing about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. It is compared herein to the pure waters of the Ganges, which are full of lotus flowers. The enjoyers of these lotus flowers are the pure devotees, who are like bees and swans. They chant like the flowing of the Ganges, the river of the celestial kingdom. This purport is just like pure poetry. The author desires such sweetly flowing waves to cover his tongue. He humbly compares himself to materialistic persons who always engage in dry talk from which they derive no satisfaction. If they were to use their dry tongues to chant the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, as exemplified by Lord Chaitanya, they would taste sweet nectar and enjoy life. So, today is the appearance day of Lord uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So much can be said. Um, the transcendental characteristics uh, and the path.
pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are like innumerable precious gems which one do you pick up and comment on? <laughs> If to start somewhere, so perhaps we can start from the basics. That, uh, amongst other things, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Yuga avatar. In each age, uh, the Lord Himself appears to inaugurate the process of. Self-realization in that age. Dharman tu sakshat bhagavat panitam, Bhagavatam says. But for the Lord, no one else can inaugurate the process of religion. He's the singular, only person who can inaugurate the process of religion in each age. And so he does in Satya, Treta, Dwarpara, and very mercifully in uh, in Kali Yuga. However, out of these unlimited incarnations, because he comes in each age and inaugurates the uh, religious process, but uh, he's not limited just to that role. He comes on no, numerous occasions. Ete chamsa kolo pumsha krishnashtu bhagavan swayam. Indriya vyakalam lokam vidayute juge juge. Some of those incarnations are mentioned in uh, Bhagavatam, Paribhasha Sutra, from which that verse is the Paribhasha Sutra, from which the uh, rest of the Bhagavatam develops. Uh, all the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions, but Lord Sri Krishna is the uh, Shwayam Bhagavan. He's the source of all incarnations. Unlimitedly. We could spend many lifetimes studying these various incarnations. However, the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very special. And why so? We quoted yesterday Sri Rupa Goswami. Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prem Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gurtu Shre Namaha. O most munificent incarnation, you are Krishna himself, appearing as uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You have assumed the uh, golden color of Srimati Radharani and are widely distributing pure love of God Thus we offer our obeisances to you. And this, in essence, is Lord Chaitanya's uh, special contribution. Above and beyond all the other incarnations, he is uh, widely distributing uh, pure love of God. Why is this special? Because uh, there's no mention of other incarnations focusing on this uh, love of God. During their missions in this world, there's no mention of them breaking open the storehouse of ecstatic love of God. Although they may have their, they may come with their associates to who, to various degrees, reciprocate, engage in reciprocate in loving pastimes. The, the mission of the Lord is clearly described in Bhagavad Gita. Paritranaya sadhanam vinashaya taduskritam dharma samstapanartaya. When these incarnations come, what do they do? They rescue devotees, they kill demons, and they establish dharma. Is there mention of uh, ecstatic love? Do they bring that message? For example, uh, in rescuing devotees, Lord Nishringadev, he appeared to deliver his devotee Pallad Maharaj, Paritranaya Shadanam. Lord Varaha, he appeared to uh, kill the demon Hiranyaksha, Vinashaya Duskritam. And Lord Kapila, he appeared to establish absolute truth, Dharma Shamsna Panartaya. He just spoke. Is there any mention? In these 
leelas of wide distribution of love of God. But Lord Chaitanya, this was his main purpose. The other things, paritranaya sadhanam, vinashaya duskritam, dharma samsapanathya, these may have been side effects <laughs> of his movement. But the principal activity was to flood the world with love of God. This is actually described, it's not a secret, it's, it's an open secret. It's a secret because the mass of people don't know. And it's a confidential subject matter, but it's open. If one wants to know that mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's very nicely elaborated upon by his confidential associates. We can understand him through his confidential associates. And one of those associates is Kaviraj Goswami who writes in his Chaitanya, epic Chaitanya Charitamrita, we get an insight. You won't find this in the Vedic literatures. But the words of pure devotees, self-realized souls, who are always enjoying a very intimate, loving relationship with the Lord, through their eyes we can see and understand it. It may not be described in the Vedas, but their words are as good as Veda because they're in direct association with the Lord. <laughs> so Kaviraj Goswami writes that after Lord Krishna appeared and showed his pastimes along with his liberated souls and in this world, he came and he showed those pastimes, but the conditioned souls, they weren't allowed to participate. It was like going to the theater, going to one of Pajapati Prabhu's famous, dramatical, theatrical productions. You can watch it, but you have to sit in the audience, you can't participate. I asked him today, you're so famous in ISKCON as, as the icon of drama. Is there a drama today? He said, no, I haven't done that in a long time. Said, what? That's another reason I came to Dallas. You know, on these, these days, drama is so important for bringing forth spiritual emotion. These days are for, for, for awakening that deep spiritual emotion, saturated. And theatrical dramas, Prabhupada said one time, it's for bringing forth. He, he himself was once in a theatrical performance when he was in college about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. They were supposed to put it on one week, and then they, they said, no, we need more time. They practiced for months, and when they, they felt that they, the performance was right and the mood was correct, they performed the drama, and Prabhupada said the whole audience cried. So we have our kirtan, we have philosophy. But on these days, we should have uh, theatrical performances, because it's... Especially for us, in Kali Yuga, it's so easy to bring forth some spiritual emotion, especially when we see the pastimes of Krishna or Lord Chaitanya. So, hopefully, next time we come, Prajapati Prabhu can put on one of his classic productions. It's like that. Lord came, and it was a it was a production, and by seeing it, you got the impetus to engage in Krishna consciousness. Nothing is more attractive than those leelas. This world appears to be attractive to our conditioned eyes, but when we see or even if we hear the pastimes of the Lord, we have a change of heart. No, I want to be part of that production, not this production, not Maya's production. I want to be part of the, the spiritual production of the Lord. So he showed. But when Krishna went back to the spiritual world, he considered, according to the intimate vision of Kaviraj Goswami, he thought, well, I have gone and I have showed my leelas, but I didn't invite anyone on the stage to participate. That's very unusual. If you're doing a dramatical performance and then you say, come on up, join us. <laughs> I'm not qualified. No, you come anyway. And by coming here, you'll become qualified. It's very unusual for the performers to invite the laymen, the common men up on the stage. That's how you get the real taste of the play. You can practice, be part of the production. So, Lord Krishna considered, I have to go back again. And this time, 
I'll put on the performance. I'll have my confidential associates, Shimati Radharani, Vishaka, Lalita, Champaklata, Induleka, Shuba, Rakshana. I'll have them all come down again. But out of my causeless mercy, I'll invite the inhabitants of London and New York and Paris to come up on the stage and chant with us. And through that Sangha, their hearts will become purified and they'll get, they'll get this taste of what we're, this dance we're having in the spiritual world. So this is why Rupa Goswami said, you're most merciful incarnate. Usually you come and with your most qualified performance you have the stage. And, and your Leela as Garanga Mahaprabhu, you just sweep everybody up in that pastime. Just like our Bhakti Marg Swami. Have you ever met Bhakti Marg Swami? Yes. What a sadhu. Humble. Very humble. What amazing service. He, he can come into any temple situation. He can just take devotees who've had absolutely no theatrical training. Even if they're kind of shy and you know, like the last person you would consider being, you know, in a, in a play. And in three to four days or a week, he can engage them and train them and put a, on a play that will just make you cry your heart out. I was in Durban, South Africa last year at this time when they had the Durban Rathiatra. And um, the highlight for me was Bhakti Marg Swami's theatrical performance. Because I know all the devotees down there. Inside and out, I've been preaching down there for many years. And I don't think a lot of them are actors. But when I saw them on the stage, I was in, oh my gosh. And it was all the training and association of Bhakti Marg. He's famous like that. I was just some temple, oh, I was in, I was in Chile a few days ago. He was, I said, I mentioned his name. Oh yes, he came down. We had a wonderful play. <laughs> and I was this and I was in the... So like that. The Krishna's like that. He comes. He says, all right, you come and you come up on the stage. And then... Sanatana Goswami remarks that just as bell metal can be changed into gold by a, a mystical process, so an ordinary conditioned soul can be turned into a Brahmana Vaishnava by proper uh, association, training, and diksha. It's miraculous. How is it done? We take up the process of Krishna consciousness. We participate in the Lord's pastimes. So he invited us to the medium of the Sangatam movement. And even low-born fallen souls could chant Hare Krishna and experience love of God. In the uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami comments that this process of congregational chanting of the holy names is so potent, he said, that even a neophyte devotee can sometimes experience a deep spiritual emotion. This is very significant. We're hankering for those emotions, but we're covered by lust, anger, and greed. But the causeless mercy of Lord Chaitanya and this process of kirtan is that once in a while you get a glimpse. It's like a sailor's on the sea and sailing, sailing, and then finally he gets a glimpse of the a land and then the fog comes in again. <laughs> but he had a glimpse, so he keeps on going. So on the foggy stage of neophyte devotional service, sometimes we get a little glimpse. Actually, Rupa Goswami says the same thing about the five essential processes of Krishna consciousness. Chanting Hare Krishna, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, living in a holy place, associating with devotees, and worshipping the deity. He said these are so potent that sometimes even a neophyte devotee can experience deeper spiritual emotions. So even as neophyte devotees, so this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the proof is that when he was here and he invited everyone on the stage, 
The universe was in, inundated with love of God, and according to Kaviraj Goswami, all living entities in the universe went back to Godhead. Hmm. Looks like we weren't in this universe. So the incarnation of Lord Chaitanya is very unique, very special. He did something that no other incarnation has ever done before, and he's still doing it. Now we should also consider what type of love did Mahaprabhu deliver? He delivered Krishna Prema. That is evident by the fact that we chant the Krishna mantra. Generally, whatever mantra you are, are chanting, you will achieve that destination. So, uh, we are chanting the Krishna mantra. Nartam dastakur golok prem dan harinam shankirtan golok, he says, golok dan Golok Prem Dan Harina. This mantra is coming from what? It's coming from Goloka. And who lives in Goloka? Krishna, Shamsunda Krishna. So we're chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. We're not chanting Raghupati Raghavadajaram, Patit Pavan Sitaram. Because that mantra will take you to. Ayodhyadam. That is the official kingdom of God. And we pay our full dandabats to that dam, to the deity of that dam, to the devotees of that dam. Somehow, by causeless mercy, though, we, found our, we find ourselves in this uh, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnav Shampradaya, where generally the participants of this movement. They, they go to uh, Goloka Vrindavan with a very sweet, intimate, loving mood of, of Krishna consciousness. So this is what Lord Chaitanya brought. Before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, we have to understand, most Vaishnavas were worshipping the Lord of Vaikuntha Narayan because what Vaishnava Sampradayas were present? The Sri Sampradaya. And even Madhva Sampradaya, they, they worship the Vatsalya mood or they hanker for the Vatsalya mood. Krishna as, as Bal Krishna, the young baby, the boy. So then, this idea of Madhurya Ras, um, seeing Krishna as your lover, first hint came from Madhavindapuri. O my Lord, O gracious to the lowly, thou art now living in Mathura. When will thou come to me? O oh, darling mine, my heart is burning in pains of separation. Oh, what shall I do? Oh, what shall I do? Oh, what shall I do? Madhavindapuri appeared before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, through his example and through his preaching introduced this understanding of um, Madhurya Rasa, the conjugal loving mood like the gopis of Vrindavan. On his deathbed, he was in that mood, that mood of separation, Vipralamba Bhava, and he was lamenting. He had one disciple, Guru Maharaj, why are you lamenting at the moment of death? You're supposed to be a liberated soul, not uh, lamentation, like an ordinary soul there engaged in hankering and lamenting. Why are you lamenting? You should be Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanshati. You should be blissful when you're leaving. <laughs> he didn't understand this deeper mood of Madhavindapuri, uh, in the mood of separation, like the Gopis of Vrindavan. So Madhavindapuri said, You get out of here, you rascal. And another disciple was called, and that disciple understood this deeper mood of Madhavindapuri. Who was that disciple? Ishwara Puri. And so, being blessed by his Guru Maharaj later on, he became the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, Mahaprabhu doesn't need a spiritual master, but again, he sets the example. And then he fully broke open that storehouse of love of God, that understanding of um, Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya's mission was to establish Vrindavan as the um, most sacred of all holy places, and that the gopis' love for Krishna is the most exalted love of the Lord. 
So that's the type of love. The highest to the lowest. The highest understanding of love of God is somehow or other available to the most fallen souls of Kali Yuga. We're the most fallen because we're the burnt remnants of the previous ages. We didn't take advantage of those processes were available in previous ages. So we're like kind of the burnt remnants, but from the phoenix of the ashes, Mahaprabhu is delivering the fallen souls of Kali Yuga. There's that classic Christian analogy. From the, the phoenix rose from the ashes. So from the burnt ashes, those who didn't make it, Mahaprabhu is just like diamonds. What do, where do diamonds, the most precious jewel, comes from the most filthy substance? What's the most filthy substance? Coal. I don't know. You don't. In America, we don't have coal. We've gone beyond that in 1800s. But in Europe, we still have coal, and you have to heat the furnace. So you pick the coal up, and you put at the basement. They load the coal down there, and then you take the coal and you put it into the furnace, the fire. Try to wash that coal off your hands. In the early years in in Poland, we were helping like that at our farm at New Shantipur. But, but and it, you know, it's like dye. It doesn't come off. I dye my clothes. It takes days for that orange dye to... So the coal was like that. So from that filth, from filthy coal comes what? Diamonds. Diamonds are nothing more than coal which is compressed over millions and billions and billions of years. The pressure of the earth, the coal is there. The coal comes from the plants which decompose and, and then they become coal and they press them, and then you get diamonds. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the coal-like hearts of the devotees in Kali Yuga, from the lust and the anger. Somehow by his causeless mercy, the precious diamond of Braj Bhakti becomes manifest. Therefore, Rupa Goswami is commenting, what is, who is this incarnation? He's giving the highest to the lowest. Before it was that uh, Aishvarya Bhav, but Lord Chaitanya explained, his followers explained that Krishna has certain transcendental characteristics that even Lord Narayan, the Lord of Vaikuntha, doesn't have. Krishna, he's a performer of wonderful childhood pastimes. He's always surrounded with devotees, endowed with love of God. He can attract all living entities in the universe with his flute playing. Narayan doesn't, Narayan doesn't have a flute. And Krishna can attract all the living entities of the universe just by playing on his flute. And his beauty cannot be rivaled. So Lord Chaitanya revealed Vrindavan Krishna, the process of awakening our love for him, in the mood of the residence of Vrindavan. Unique and we're the recipients of that causeless mercy. This is the most amazing thing. During the appearance of Lord Ramachandra, some sages, after many, many lifetimes of penance and austerity, they uh, found themselves attracted to Lord Ramachandra, not in the mood of dasya, or servitorship, because if you study carefully the Ramayana, all of the participants of the Ram Lila are in the Dasi mood for the most part. Somehow these sages, these yogis, tapasvis, these rishis in the Dandakaranya forest, they have the long matted hair, the fiery eyes, the long fingernails, the long toenails all curled around after hundreds of years of not cutting, thin and skinny, but illuminated like the sun, Prabhupada said. The soul is more brilliant than 10,000 suns rising simultaneously, although they have a, a fierce countenance because they're tapasvis, they're celibate. They don't allow the semen to go downwards, the semen goes upwards, and it nourishes the finer tissues of the brain to understand the philosophy. 
And they are very renounced and living in seclusion in the forest. And that tages that spiritual power. They push the soul upwards and it breaks through the Brahmarandra, the weak point of the skull. Pooh, and it goes back to the spiritual. Oh, those tapasvis. Where are they now? Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he witnessed his grandfather depart in that way. The soul broke through the Brahmarandra, the, the weak point. You know, when your skull is to come through the womb, the soul, the brain, you, there has to be some subtle. So there's a hole there, you can squeeze and then come back out. But it remains a hole for a few months or years. But it's a weak point. So the yogi raises the Kundalini, and then poof. So Bhaktivinoda's grandfather, he died in that way, and, and, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur witnessed that. So these were tapasvis in the say, and they were very uh, the best among men, the best amongst the renounced order of life. No attraction to the opposite sex. But when they saw Lord Ramachandra, they had this mood of this conjugal attraction. They wanted to associate with him, not as that man, they wanted to associate with him in, the, in, a, in an intimate, loving way. <laughs> but it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> because that mood wasn't there in the Ram Leela. So Ramachandra instructed them, no, you wait a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> you wait until I appear as Krishna. So later on, those straight, those very strict celibate men they became uh, the ladies, gopis. They became gopis, and they were able to fulfill their heart's desire by associating with the Lord in that Madhuri Ras. They had to wait millions and millions of years between the time of Lord Ramachandra and Lord Krishna. How much time? That was Treta Yuga. So then Treta, then Dupora. They had to wait a long time. Millions and millions of years, and then they're desirable. Now that same love is easily available in one lifetime if you fully surrender. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Try to understand that previously these things were only available to um, the gods on earth, the godly. Only the godly could associate with God. To associate with fire, you have to be like fire. To associate with God, who shudha shatva, you have to come out of ignorance, out of passion, into goodness, into shudha shatva. So generally, these things, these opportunities were only there for the top most class of men, the brahmanas. Therefore, they're glorified. Namo brahmanya devaya, go brahmanya hitaya cha. Jagati Taya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo They're gods on earth, very pure, saintly persons. Through them, we worship Lord through the representative. Like when you feed a Brahmana, to be understood, you're, you're feeding God. Because everything they do is offered to the Lord. That's why the Brahmas are little, usually a little chubby. They sit and they're not interested in doing anything of this world. There's a shravanam and a kirtanam, vishnu, shmaranam, padasevanam. They don't move around. Why move here and there? Just sit in one place and do your bhajan. And the people like to feed them because they, through them the Lord's service is accepted. So they sit and they eat and they get the brahman belly. And they're not thinking, oh, now I have to go jog and work in the gym so I look good. No. They're healthy. A little chubby like that. Not like today. The thinner you are, the more beautiful you are. <laughs> Brahmana belly. And the spiritual life is joyful. Take some sandesh, some burfi. Don't, we're not into dieting and fasting and things. Of course, we don't want to overdo it. <laughs> Bhakti Sadhana Saraswati used to chastise the sannyasis who became overweight. So 
So, generally it was those persons who did their strict adherence, the brahmanas, they had the opportunity for advancing in spiritual life. How is it that the, the fallen conditioned souls of Kali Yuga got that opportunity? Because there's no brahmanas in this age. I mean, there are, but... Kalo Sudra Sambhavan. Everyone in Kali Yuga is born the Sudra Minta. So how did the Sudras get the qualification for elevating to love of God? This is just the Lord's mercy. Krishna is the seed-giving father of all living entities. And a father is naturally inclined towards his children. If there's some danger in a public assembly, the father will immediately save his children first, even before he saves himself. There's so many examples of that, where the father saved the children and he died in the fire or something. It's the nature of love. But Krishna is equally inclined towards all his children. When he sees them burning in the fire of material existence, one time Prabhupada said, the Lord is more anxious that we go back to the spiritual world than, even than we are. And even we may forget him, he never forgets us. We may forget the father, but the father's constant meditation is how we'll come home. What is the proof of that? He comes every day. If someone comes every day and knocks on your door with a message, they're, they're pretty persistent. They're pretty insistent. <laughs> it's like the Jehovah Witnesses are like that. You know, they're coming with their message. You know, even you say no, you slam the door. Next week they're there, and again and again. Other Mormons. The God is like that. If someone comes every day to tell you something, they're very determined. Does he come every day, Krishna? Yes. He comes once in a day of Brahma, but time is calculated according to the universe. Our puny little ant-like time, who cares for it? Time is calculated according to the celestial beings. They're, they're significant. Demi gods. So Krishna says in Gita, he comes once in a day of Brahma. Every day of Brahma he comes. Yada yada hi dharmasya blanir bhavi. It's very insistent, very persistent, knocking on the door. Hello, sarva dharmam paricca mame kam. Finally, no one's listening, so he just comes. As Prabhupada said, here is Krishna, take him. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But of course, this task is very difficult in Kali Yuga. But no one wants to hear. Therefore, to spread his message, he has to employ very potent astras or weapons. He comes with astras. Every time the Lord comes, he comes with astras. So Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Shangupangusha Ashram. What are the Lord's as previously he would come with his gada, his club, he'd come with his bow, he'd come with his arrows. We look at Lord in Shringadev, he has his he has his claws, but afterwards he manifested his multi faceted arms and he had a weapon of every imaginable kind to fight with the soldiers of Iranikashifu. He has his weapons. But those weapons are not applicable in Kali Yuga because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is an incarnation of love. So he doesn't use his Sudarsan. When he was about to use his Sudarsan on Madhai, Lord Nityananda interrupted. Hey, wait a minute, that's not, that's not, that was last time, that's not this time. <laughs> if, you have to, if, you, if you have to act like this, you're going to have to do that with everybody because... Everybody in Kali Yuga is like Jagai and Madhai. Hey, I'm not that bad. And I, you know, maybe not this lifetime, but if we look at your past record, it's not very good. You've got a bad record, criminal record. If you've got a criminal record, they don't give you a passport. <laughs> if you've got a criminal record, you don't get this job. If you've got a criminal record, you don't get love of God. We've got a criminal record. Brahmanda, Brahma, Dikonya, Bhagavan, Jeev, Guru, Krishna, Krishna. What have we been doing? Everything but Krishna consciousness. If we were doing Krishna consciousness, we wouldn't be here. 
That's the one thing we didn't do. Prabhupada told Vishnu John Swami, just give this one lifetime to Krishna. You've given all those lifetimes for so many different concepts of life. Just take a risk and give this one lifetime, Atman event, fully to Krishna and see what happens. On Kali Yuga, it's very difficult to preach. Prabhupada told me one time, personally, we came back from a Harinam party and Prabhupada asked me what the kirtan was like and I, instead of, you know, I complained. I was hard, Prabhupada. They chastised me. When did I ever say that preaching is easy? He wanted an answer. Uh, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say. So, the Lord, if He were to employ the Sudarshan, we all deserve the Sudarshan. So we deserve. The wages of sin is death. We're in the Bible Belt. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. The wages means what you get in recipient. You know, the boss gives you your wages. We've we've sinned, and our therefore Krishna says in Gita that those miscreants, those rascals, those lowest, I cast them into various demoniac species of life, birth after birth, they never see the sun. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. And who are the most sinful? It's you and me. All of us. We have nothing to be proud about, especially in Kali Yuga. So we deserve, this, according to the Gita, we deserve the Sudar son. That's what we deserve. But Nitai, who's the commander-in-chief of the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya, he said, hey, no, if you do that, then you, everyone, there'll be no one left. You have to, you're, you're a different, different mood in this age, Lord. You destroy the demoniac mentality, like the neutron bomb. It, it explodes up in the air now, and kills the people but leaves all the, the buildings intact. The mercy of Lord Chaitanya Sankatan movement doesn't kill the person but it kills the demoniac mentality and leaves him intact so that he can go forward in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so what, what are the astras then? If there's no gada, if there's no bow, there's no arrows, there's no sudarsan, then how does he defeat us? How does he defeat our demoniac mentality? It has to be defeated. He has to bring us to our knees to surrender, to raise the white flag. How do he cause us to surrender? He has his ostras. Chanting, dancing, feasting. This is how he defeats us. <laughs> Therefore, demigods say, oh, I like this process. Uh, they're lining up on the heavenly planets to be born in Kali Yuga. This is better. You know, they, they waited, you know, all through that meditation age, and then the, then the, uh, the Agnihota age, and then they waited for this age. Then in a hundred years, you chant your heart out, you dance your feet out, and you fill your neck, you fill yourself with Bashar up to the neck, uh, and then you become qualified. This is something amazing. It's astounding, especially the Prashadam part. How do you tame a wild animal? It's very hard to tame a wild animal. But there's a way you can do it. When I was a young boy, we moved from one uh, city to the next, and our house, because it was a new housing development, it was on the edge of a forest. And there were raccoons out there, and there was deer, and there were bunny rabbits, and there were all kinds of... As a kid, I was just... You know, we'd lived in the city and all of a sudden we're in the forest and I wanted to like play with the animals. And my father said, you know, they're wild animals. But he was smart. He said, so you go every day and you put some food there. You put some food there. Every day I'd go and i put some food there and then the animals would come and then they'd, you could see them from a distance. They would be scared to come. But after a while, you come and you put the food there and they kind of come like that. Some of the chipmunks would come and the squirrels would come and like that. 
last year in Vrindavan, I was two years ago, I was taking prasadam in Giraj Maharaj's house, and it's on the, it's the bottom floor and the top floor, and there's lots of monkeys there to go up the steps past the monkeys. A little scary sometimes. So there was a family of monkeys, and I was taking prasadam, not on the veranda, but just inside. There's a screen door. I was sitting there inside, and um, the monkeys were outside. So I was throwing them some prasad. The more I throw, the closer they'd come. So after half an hour, believe it or not, I had six monkeys around me in Maharaja's house, <laughs> eating with me. Six monkeys, we're all eating together. I put a little prasad there, and the monkeys were eating. And I a little bit, all of a sudden, <clears throat> one of the monkeys became very violent. And he showing his teeth. And I jumped up and went in Maharaj's bedroom and locked the door. And they all ate off my plate. <laughs> and I remember what Prabhupada said one time. He was, went to the zoo with the devotees in Melbourne. And one of the devotees was kind of, there was a, a lion there. And he was kind of, you know, just sitting in the lion. The devotee was kind of, da, da, hello, lion. All of a sudden, Row! The devotee pulled his hand back. Prabhupada said, remember, a lion is always a lion. <laughs> So these monkeys, I thought, oh, they're my cute little pets now, but they're... <laughs> but the idea is like, how do, you, how do they get these tigers to do these, you know, tigers like ferocious animal? How do they get them to jump through fire? And the, 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 tra- the lion opens his head and the trainer puts his head inside the lion's mouth. Have you seen that when you're kids at the circus? And the lion does all these tricks. How do they do it? Because they feed them. They get some meat or something afterwards. When I was, I went to um, SeaWorld some years ago. And I go to Disneyland and SeaWorld, all these places, to get some ideas for a Polish festival tour. And I saw that the dolphins are doing these amazing tricks. They're almost like human or something. I can think, how do they do it? But then I saw the trainer, you know, they're very tricky. They have a little fish here and then they kind of throw it on the side the people don't see they think oh these just doing it out of love the dolphins <laughs> but after every trick they throw them a fish and they eat it <laughs> so this is Lord Chaitanya has employed, employed the same principle prasadam he's taming the wild uncultured souls of Kali Yuga he's feeding us and by eating and eating and eating, we become tame. What is taming? We become civilized. Civilized means we give up sinful activity. We agree to give up meat eating, intoxication, illicit sex, and gambling. These are not the activities of high cultured people, those are the activities of low class people, untamed, wild people. And by coming to Krishna consciousness and experiencing this very high culture of Krishna consciousness, amazingly, we give those things up. But that doesn't make us Krishna conscious. It's not that by following the regulative principles necessarily you make spiritual advancement. It just means you become civilized. You become a human being. You become tame. And when you're civilized, you can begin to understand this deep esoteric merit message of Krishna consciousness. Gradual advancement. So he's, Mahaprabhu's tamed us with prasadam. But our main business is not eating, although you often hear, you're going to eat your way back to God. Yeah, the Mayavadis probably said, though, we'll capture them by giving them samosas or something. Our main business is not eating, <laughs> our main business is chanting. Therefore, on days like this, we don't eat, we chant. On Akadasi, we curb down our eating. Not that on, on the day, days which are saturated with mercy, we increase our eating. No, we decrease our eating, and our, our main activity is chanting. Samsara sarpadushtanam murchitanam kolo yuge asadham bhagavanama shrimad vaishnavashevanam sarabhom bhattacharya and his hundred prayers glorifying Gauranga Mahaprabhu at his home when he realized who he was. Those persons who have been bit by the serpent of samsara or the repetition of birth and death in the age of Kali, 
they shall get relief by the medicinal herb, a sadham bhagavan nama, the medicine of chanting Hare Krishna and Shurima and Vaishnava Shevanam. Serving the lotus feet of devotees. Not just chanting Hare Krishna, but chanting Hare Krishna in the association of devotees. It's more potent like that. It's more potent. The, the chanting is always good, but it becomes more potent when done in the uh, association of devotees. And this deliverance of uh, you and me, this attests to the great glories of the Holy Name. Just like when a new medicine comes out to show its potential, to give people faith, doctors give it to the most critical cases, the most diseased patients. Just like when I was a child, I contracted, contacted or contracted, contracted, I mean, I mean, you get the disease. So I had spinal meningitis. It's a killer. Spinal meningitis. And I think I was about five or something. And I remember, vividly I remember, I have a hard time, my memory's not so good, but I vividly remember having spinal meningitis. I was five months in the hospital. And there was uh, about seven or ten of us. And very severe cases. We were, in, we were isolated. And my mother later told me that the doctors were experimenting. My parents agreed. Because the antibiotics in those days, this is like early 50s, were not so advanced as they are now. They were searching for a, a powerful antibiotic or drug which would... Uh, counteract the spinal meningitis because kids were dying from it. So in the hospital there was a, a group of us and each little group was administered a different combination of drugs. And my group, there was three or four of us, the drugs worked. And the other groups, my mom said the boys died. Oh, lucky, I was lucky I got... I wasn't right. <laughs> right. So then those drugs later became the, the, the drugs which they evolved and now spinal meningitis are about serious. You can, the right drug combination would have to die. So they, we were like the guinea pigs kind of saying, and, and, oh, so this drug works. So what medicine works on the diseased souls of Kali Yuga? Well, we're the guinea pigs. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So this is amazing. We even hear how Lord Chaitanya made animals chant and dance. So hearing these pastimes should give us hope. Because theory is not enough. You need the example. You need the Bhagavat, you need the person Bhagavat. We need, we need Bhagavatam and we need Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada demonstrated how to live the Bhagavatam, how to achieve perfection by following the Bhagavatam. Just like cancer patients. When you hear, you get that fateful, fateful news one day, the doctor says, uh, Sir, I have to tell you, you've got cancer. Some last year, I thought I had melanoma. Melanoma is a skin cancer. I was in South Africa, and the doctors took a, saw something in my back, made a diary chapter about it, and I heard them talking in the background, it looks really bad third stage, fourth stage, melanoma. He's always in the sun. <laughs> We've warned him before. You get those kind of skin cancers, they take off with the solution, they burn them off and turn into melanoma. I heard them talking. Oh my God. You know, like, you hear about it, but when, they, when you, when they tell you you have cancer, then you know, oh my God, you know, then all your budge on and all the classes and everything, you know, I had to take shelter, strengthen that, I'm going to die. But when the cat, of course it wasn't, didn't actually have melanoma. But the cancer patients, when they hear, then you hear about people like Lance Armstrong. He had a very advanced uh, cancer, testicular cancer, but he beat it. And he went on to be 
one of the famous, most famous athletes in history. He won the, uh, I don't know what it's called, they have the cycling race. Tour de France, five times or seven times or something? No, he didn't take drugs. He beat the cancer. So then for, oh, if you've got the cancer and you've got this example, here's a man, he did it, he beat it. Gives you great hope. Daiviesha gunamai mamamaya duratyaya. Krishna says the odds are against you. Very difficult to overcome this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature. Whoa. Here's someone who did it. He beat it. The sadhu. We have the Bhagavatam, but if there were no sadhus, we wouldn't, who could we look to for an example how to beat it? So therefore, very often, Lord Chaitanya, he gives us mercy to the most fallen, to give us faith. Like Jagai Madai. Don't think Jagai Madai, they're like the comical little characters we do at our Sunday feast presentations. We take one devotee, another devotee, and then we dress them up, and they act like drunkards, and we just laugh hilariously to see, you know, Krishna Das or Radha Kinkari, you know, acting like... No, these were real-life dacoits, Killers, rapists, extortionists, mafiosos. Jagai Mahdi were very sinister personalities. If you think of them like that in the real light, then you can appreciate, oh. When Mahaprabhu, after he stopped the Sudha, for the Sudha song, he on the request of Lord Nityananda, therefore the spiritual master is sometimes considered to be the representative of Lord Nityananda because... He intervenes in our hellish destiny and recommends us to Lord Chaitanya. When he held back that Sudarshan and accepted Jagai and Madhya on the request of Lord Nityananda, then he said, So, you'll stop your sin? Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> the military? Sir, yes, sir. We, don't, we, did, we weren't taught to say yes, sir. We said, Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Say it again. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> and you'll chant Hare Krishna. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> then what did he do? He embraced them. This is causeless mercy. He embraced them. And as a result of embracing Jagai and Madhai, his, his golden form, because he had the continence, he had the inner mood of Radha, the bhav, he came, Krishna came to experience the bhav of Radha. The main reason he came. And your, the face is an index of the mind. Your, your internal mood is manifests externally, the way you dress, the way you look, the way you talk, etc. So he had embraced uh, Jagai and Madhai, and his, the golden form representing the mood of Radha, Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Brindavaneshwari. It turned black. Goranga became black like night, not like Sham, pretty, but black. And the devotees were devastated. What? Gorangas become black like night? And he said, Yes, these are the sinful reactions of Jagai and Madhai. And anyone who does Vaishnav Aparat, I'm going to give him these sinful reactions of Jagai and Madhai. <laughs> Anyone who offends my devotee, the reward, the wages of sin are death. There's nothing more sinful, nothing more offensive than offending a Vaishnava, Hati Mata Aparata. You don't get this. So, that's the significance. They were so fallen. But they repented. They wanted to change their ways. And they agreed to chant. The rules and regulations means the do's and the don'ts. They agreed to accept the rules and they agreed to chant the regulated number of rounds and the beads every day. They were delivered. So that's our transcendental Lance Armstrong. Dagai and Madhai. So it gives us faith. It's possible. Krishna is always giving hope. 
mam hi parta vipasritya ye pisu papayonaya studio vaishishtha shudras tepi anti param gatim this movement is this krishna comes is full of hope trust no future however bright don't sir don't quote that saying in our krishna comes the movement trust no future however bright yes that's your life the risky life of material enjoyment and sense gratification. But in Krishna consciousness, you can trust your future to be very bright. O son of Prita, those who take shelter of me, though they be of lower birth, women, merchants and workers, they also can attain the supreme destination. Then how much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas, the devotees and saintly kings, therefore having come to this temporary Miserable world engaged in loving service to me. He gives hope to, to, the, to the lower, even in Dvokta Pura Yuga. Hey, lo, the, those of low birth, women, merchants, workers, come ye all, like we have our Statue of Liberty, symbolizing the this great country of America welcomes the downtrodden, the fallen, the persecuted. Come. How much more that is embodied in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is manifest in the personality of Sri Prabhupada and his beloved Islam movement. They talk about open house. Our house is always open. Our doors are always open to the fallen. We welcome everyone to this movement. And we enjoy seeing the newcomers advance in Krishna consciousness. This is our happiness. What is our happiness? We don't take pleasure in things of this world. But by nature, we're, ha- we're meant to be happy. Intrinsic nature of water is wet, salt is salty, sugar is sweet. The soul is full of ananda, bliss. And what is our happiness? Our happiness is seeing people who are bereft of Krishna consciousness, get the same opportunity that we have to become joyful. Param Drishtanivartante. By coming and taking shelter of this beautiful temple. That's our success. The success is how many people come through those doors and get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if Krishna was like that, Come, you merchants, come, you matajis, come, you workers, what to speak of you, brahmanas, all of you come. He was merciful, but as we said yesterday, Lord Chaitanya is even more merciful. He's delivering tig- lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. Lions, tigers, and bears. The Wizard of Oz. Lions, tigers, and bears. This is Lord Chaitanya. So let us appreciate this great mercy because then we can take proper advantage of it. Because a child does not understand the value of a jewel, he cannot take proper advantage of it. He goes to mommy's jewel case and it's pretty colors and he swallows them and he throws them in the dirt. And he has to be educated. So today is a day for discussing the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his mercy upon us in the form of the jewel of chanting Hare Krishna. Kaler dosha nidhe rajan asti mek asti ek mahaguna kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha padam vajat. Hey, king, this age of Kali Yuga is is an ocean of inauspiciousness. But kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha. There's one good thing left in this age. What is that? Simply by chanting this Hare Krishna mantra, one can achieve um, perfection. It's sometimes been compared to a sale. <laughs> a sale means that you can get something valuable at a very cheap price. It's like they have... We don't have it here in America, but I spent a lot of time like in Australia and England, they have what's called Boxing Day. You can never figure out what Boxing Day was. 
Boxing Day. I mean, after Christmas, they all go out and box or whatever. Or you box everything back up. And <laughs> Boxing Day is, means you... Boxing Day, I don't know what, actually where the word, phrase came, but it means that Boxing Day, that the day after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year, all the stores in Australia, they're open, and you can go back and you can take back the presents you don't like and exchange them, maybe put them back in the box or something. But you can get things at dirt cheap price. So there's more, people spend more money between Christmas and New Year's than they did leading up to the festival of Christmas. Because Christmas is a, shop, it's a mad shopping spree. Everyone buying presents and presents. You can just imagine. I heard some figure of, you know, like millions and millions and millions of dollars are spent in the weeks coming up to Christmas to buy presents. But more money is spent after Christmas to New Year's Day when, when the sale's on. Wow, I can get something expensive for cheap. So you can get the most valuable thing. Sabai pum sham para dharmo yato bhaktar doksachi. Ahaitakiya patiyata ya yat ma shuprashiditi. That is completely satisfying to the self. Pure devotional service. Unmotivated. Unerative service. You can get that most valuable thing but a very cheap price. A little breath. A little prawn. Use some of your prawn. You don't have to even move. You can be a couch potato. If you're a couch potato and you're overweight and you're addicted to all this junk food, what hope is there for you to become vachu vegam, manasakrota vegam, jiva vegam, upasta vegam, apaka, brahmana, tapasvi, vai... You just... Yes! Just lay on your... <laughs> but just move your tongue. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Not that you remain the couch potato, but from that, everything else will come. First things first. When Prabhupada first came, he didn't give all the rules and regulations. He just said, chant, dance, and take prasadam. Later on, Umapati Maharaj said, Are there any rules we should follow? <laughs> Prabhupada said, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> and that famous paper, you know, that living in the ashram, these are the rules, it's been photocopied one zillion times, it's on every brahmachari ashram door. And Prabhupada said, If I told you all the rules and regulations, you'd faint. <laughs> but first things first. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. But not just that, that's not that, oh, we, we're successful, we've given up sinful activity. Ado Shraddha, Tata Sadhu Sangha, Tabhajana Kriya, Anarta Nivriti Sat. Krishna consciousness is not just about becoming free from material desires. Anarta Nivriti. Nartha means. What is wanted and unartha means what is not wanted. So what is not wanted is lust, anger, and greed. We don't want to spend our whole life just overcoming lust and anger and greed. That's only 50% of the battle. The other 50% is getting a taste for Krishna consciousness, becoming steady in Krishna consciousness, getting some bhav, getting some spiritual emotion, like my disciple Brajalila wrote me before she... I wish, Guru Maharaj, I wish I just had a little bit of bomb in my heart. A little bit of spiritual emotion after this world life. I have, don't have any spiritual emotion. I don't cry when I chant, she used to say. This is, this is our hankering. This is what we should be hankering. Not still struggling with the hankerings of this world that we've had for... We should, no. That business is finished. We don't want to entertain those thoughts and hanker for those things again. We want to advance beyond an art and nirviti. This movement's not just about becoming freed from material desires, from sex desire. It's about de- developing love for the divine couple. 
That's the gift Mahaprabhu has given us. He hasn't come to give anartha nivriti. That is certainly part of the process, essential part. What has he come to give? Govinda, feeling your separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. I'm feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. In essence, this is what we want to achieve in Krishna consciousness. This is what we should be hankering for. It's a very high goal. But that's there for us in, in Kali Yuga by the mercy of Sri Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya. These things we should be hanging. So by strict adherence to the rules and regulations and by participating in the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, these two things, it's certainly possible to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. As Prabodhananda Saraswati says in his Chaitanya Chandamrita, that by serving the same kirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya, one gets the mercy of Srimati Radharani. There's much to be discussed on this day. Again, we're speaking of Mahaprabhu as the Yuga Avatar. We're the objects of his mercy, and we should take advantage. This is a day we can refresh our determination. It's our new year. In with the new, out with the old. <laughs> That's the new year. They're ringing the bells. In with the new, out with the old. Our calendar actually begins today. We don't, our calendar is not set for January 1st. Our calendar is set for today, March 21st. 2000. This is the first day of the new year. So what do you do on a new year? You make your New Year's resolutions, which most people don't keep, but we should keep. We've already made our resolutions at the time of initiation. Guru Dev, no more meat eating, intoxication, let sex and gambling. Just chanting my rounds every day and serving you. But we have to be determined because our vows are always being tested. <laughs> but dear Leonard, she will test our sincerity. So we. We, we don't renew them, but we can refresh them. We can, uh, our determination today to read. Because these are very terrible vows. When Devarat wanted his father to become the king, and Mahabharata is described, and father wanted to marry a princess, and but the sage said, well, if, if I give my daughter as as your next queen, then she'll have children, and, but your elder son, his children will become king, so I'm not interested. So Devarati said, no, Pita, you accept that girl as your wife and let her son become the prince. I accept a lifetime of brahmacharya, a celibacy. And the demigods, who are Prakrita Bhaktas, mixed Bhaktas, wow, what a vow! We're devotees, but up here we have the apsaras. <laughs> He's accepting a life of celibacy? Bhishma. Bhishma. One who has accepted a terrible vow. And they showered flowers from the heavens upon Bhishma, gave their blessings, he could observe that vow. They called it Ugra, very, like Ugra Shringa. This terrible form of the Lord, we think it's wonderful. When we look at that terrible form of the Lord ripping apart the entrails, of, wow, I love him. He's so beautiful. My mom, my mom first saw Nishringa. Oh, he's just so terrible. <laughs> mom, he's beautiful. What? <laughs> Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. He's protecting his devotee. So we have also taken that same vow and more. It's a terrible vow, according to the karmis. We lovingly embrace that vow. Yes. No more sense gratification, just Krishna. But because we're young, we're sometimes tested. So we need mercy. We can pray on this day. Guru Maharaj, let me continue with my vows. Let me continue with my vow to, to chant your holy name every day. More and more and more and more. Now I know some of my godbrothers. 
this stage of our life, they're increasing their chanting. I have God brothers who are chanting 64 rounds a day. So, let us, on this day, this is our new year, resolve ourselves to remain strict in our observance of our vows and our chanting. And most important, let us imbibe the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to distribute this wonderful process to others. That's the real, that's where you get the real nectar, when you distribute the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So let us individually and collectively as a community embrace the mood of Chaitanya, because Yuga Avatar means he came to deliver the fallen conditioned souls. So if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for us. If God leaves his home and goes out to the fields and, and to the villages every day, Udila Avuna, He's going out, and so it's good enough for the Lord, it's good enough for Prabhupada. He retired not to the simple life of Vinda, he retired to come and preach. It's also good enough for us. We should also, as Prabhupada got older, his preaching increased. Not that we get older and our preaching decreases. No, this is the best part of life. Old age is the best part of life. We shouldn't be on the bodily platform. Oh, my youth has slipped away. As Chanakapanda says in Niti Shastra, he's, the speaker says, my, my dear young lady, why are your eyes cast downward? And she replies, you fool, you don't see that the pearl of my youth has slipped away, my beauty? No, we don't think like that. Old age, as you get older, it's better because you're more seasoned, you're more ripe, you're more mature, you're more realized in Krishna consciousness. So as we get older, our preaching should increase. Not that necessarily we have to go many places and travel, but we can sit in one place. I, told, I asked Govinda Maharaj, I said, it's getting harder to travel, Maharaj. I fear the day that I can no longer travel, I have to sit in one place. What am I going to do? When I went to see Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, he, explained, he said to me in confidence, he said, Maharaj, let me forewarn you, it's tough. It's not, I can tolerate the pain, he said, but it's hard not traveling and preaching and preaching Krishna consciousness around the world. That's, we have such a wonderful service. The hard part is just sitting here and not being able to, to go out and preach. He said like that. So I said to Govinda Maharaj, I said, Maharaj, you know, I, I need help getting up the steps now. I need help going down the steps. My knees were given out. I said, what, what, what doctor should I go to? What medicine? He said, Hindu Maharaj, it's just old age. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. I said, Maharaj, what are we going to do when we get really old 10 years from now? He said, well, I tell you what, we're going to sit all day and chant. At the night time, our disciples are going to come and we're going to have kirtan in class. You better get ready. He said, you better get a taste of the holy name. That you can sit in one place and not be restless. And chant. And then become realized enough to preach about the holy name, to inspire others. This is our life. Our life is inspiring others, just like Prabhupada did. So let's pray for the taste for the holy name and the desire to spread the holy name far and wide in the mood of Srila Prabhupada, in the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is Gaur Purnima. Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki Shri Gaur Purnima Maha Mahotsava ki Gaur Premanandi Hare Krishna.